I just ate a Kit Kat. Don't know why I felt the need to mention that. Anyway, hey Spuds, it's Jamie. How's it going? Welcome back to another video. If I don't know, I don't know, but welcome either way. I'm very glad to have you here. And today we are looking at another classic on the channel, something that we go back to time and time again. It's enjoyable, but in a very uncomfortable way. That sounded weird. It's fun to look at, but at the same time, it's like, oh my God, I can't believe these things exist. So today we are looking through the subreddit of bad women's anatomy. Just examples of images and drawings and text things of just bad women's anatomy. Lots of misogyny going on. Lots of unrealistic expectations on women and their bodies and everything like that. All the wonderful, terrible things. As I say in every video, not all women have the same body. Some women are trans. Some women have had certain surgeries and there is no right or wrong way to be a woman. This subreddit and these posts are very much just things aimed towards people specifically because they are women and sometimes that does come down to body type and genitals but just recognizing here that a woman is not defined by her body or genitals and trans women are women and blah 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 yes and on that note let's crack on and look at these posts Oh my god, are you ready? I don't think you're ready because I'm not ready. The louder I suffer the better off I am this looks like Archie comics, I don't know. He has waffle hair. Bad hair anatomy. I don't think this is about what she's saying, I think this is about her teeny tiny little waist. Teeny tiny waist, ah yes, you must suffocate yourself. You must, I don't know, it just it looks incredibly uncomfortable and I just think it's not a great expectation. If that is something people would like to wear, do it as long as it is safe for you to wear, great. But like in a comic being like, ah, here is a woman, she has no waist. Wow, her waist seems comparable to, it seems smaller than the neck of the character she's talking to. It seems comparable to his arm. No. Sexed school uniforms are inherently sexist. I don't understand the necessity for differences in school uniform. Have a school uniform and have some options within that uniform and let people wear what they want to wear. So... But somebody replied to this going, sexism is treating one group worse than the other. It involves oppression. Where is the oppression in having sex-based school uniforms? Indeed, girls need blouses and skirts to reflect their biological differences including the breasts and their hips, so that even if the uniform was intended to be sex neutral, trousers and shirts would still need to be co-opted to reflect the innate biological differences between boys and girls. Wow. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, what do I say to that? That's a very, very interesting take. Girls need blouses and skirts. They need them. Does this person think that, like, generally away from school uniforms as well, that women should be wearing blouses and skirts and not shirts and trousers? I know they've later on said that even if it's a neutral, there would need to be a difference, but, you know, they're recognising the trousers could be worn. Why is that a necessity. Like, some cuts fit some body shapes better, but that might not necessarily be the cut that someone is most comfortable in, even if, like, objectively it fits their body better. That might not be what they want to wear. That could happen regardless of your assigned birth sex or your gender identity. You could have a body shape that does not work as well for the cut that you would typically be expected to wear. So I don't really understand that. I think anybody can go look good in anything. It's about what you're comfortable in and what you want to wear. Girls do not need blouses and skirts to reflect anything. I don't... <gasps> oh my god. Who... They... I mean, if they paid somebody to paint that, they should get a refund. Unrealistic expectations. Having a torso that is three times longer than your legs and having a shoulder that is attached to the side of your neck and directly to your boobs. Wow. Wow. It's like when people get those really bad, like, portrait tattoos and it's like you wanted to show this to people. You wanted this to be on display. Do your research about who's going to do that for you. Unless you've done it yourself and then maybe consider not doing it yourself unless you practiced a little bit because, I mean, she just looks a bit like a surfboard. Fun fact, digestion is actually really painful, but your brain just tells you it's fine the same way it tells you not to bite off your finger even though you can. Is that true? I've heard the finger thing. I've heard it's like as easy to bite off a finger as it is to bite off a carrot, but like we don't do it because pain. But like digestion is painful? How does that explain? 
explain when things are actually painful. That's frustrating. Hey, quick question, why the heck doesn't it do that for menstrual cramps? And then people commented, it's the body practicing for childbirth, so your brain is telling your womb to evacuate, basically. About the menstrual cycle, it might be a motivator to procreate, which would be a clear evolutionary benefit. Are people just trying to like explain away why period cramps are painful? I don't feel like that digestion thing is true either. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Obviously there has to be a reason why people are forced to feel this pain. I mean there's a reason why we feel all sorts of pain. I don't understand how it could block out anything because I thought pain is intended to inform our brain that something is going on that we should be alerted to. Anyway, another unrealistic expectation. I mean my eyes are instantly drawn to the hair. That is a very interesting flow of head hair. The head does not look attached. There we go. Women, the current body ideal is the head looks not attached. But it is, but it looks like it's not. You have to hold it at a very awkward angle. Scientifically and medically proven, women start to develop testosterone as they strive to become top earners, do jobs men do, compete to build power and wealth in a male-dominated workplace. I mean, that just sounds like somebody who doesn't like the idea of powerful women or women being equal to men. And they're like, mm, there's a reason why this shouldn't happen. <laughs> this reduces the level of femininity in women. <laughs> The design of women was not to become competitors in society. Every sentence is getting worse. Statistics have also shown that women with such traits struggle to handle relationships and childbearing because of the presence of high testosterone. They often want softer men to complement their aggressive side. This just sounds like this person doesn't like women and doesn't think that women should be working <laughs> and does not think that women should be equal to men. Sorry, that was my phone going off. I like how it's like statistics, scientific, proven. I'm not going to provide any of the proof, but I'm just gonna say it. Ooh. And also I'm just saying, so what if it actually does increase testosterone? Who gives a shit? You only care if you're really, really insecure. It's not any of your business. I had a hysterectomy, complete full hysterectomy. Somebody asked me if I wanted more kids, could they put it back? Somebody asked me if I wanted more kids, could they put it back? Wow, that somebody was definitely a man. Sadly, nope, a woman. Oh dear. So do you keep your uterus in the fridge in a little Tupperware just in case? Of course not. It's in the freezer. Yes, you need to freeze it. Come on, keep it in in the fridge it's gonna go off. I mean when it was removed did you suddenly put it on ice and then run back to the hospital and be like put it back in? That's a very interesting question. I find it a bizarre leap. I don't find it a leap. I find it a bizarre question to ask in the sense of if somebody has shared that information with you that they've had a hysterectomy. You don't know why potentially. Maybe they did share why but like you know there are situations where you wouldn't know why so probing may not lead to the most comfortable conversation and also it doesn't really matter and like asking if somebody could get it put back in if they want more kids, that could lead to like a lot of discomfort to the person you're talking to and it's just a very odd thing to ask, let alone medically impossible. Modern beauty standards, big eyes, sharp chin, small face, skinny legs, thin waist, and we've seen thin waist a few times, huge but let's zoom out and see what the modern beauty standard equates to. Ah, praying mantis. The aspiration is to be a praying mantis. Get it. Your hands are s really serrated. It works. The description works. Like, okay. When she's not ready to settle. A Lamborghini. Very fancy car. I think that's a Lamborghini. Oh yeah. When she's not ready to settle down. She's a really expensive sports car. All smooth and angular. It's a very angular car. When she's ready to settle. A rusty truck. Mm. These ones are very uncomfortable because it's like, oh yeah, women before they're ready to settle, they're all like beautiful and unattainable. I'm trying to think of how people would describe a Lamborghini who would put a Lamborghini in this context. And then, but then when they are ready to settle and you'd actually be in a relationship with one, no, horrible, ugly, rusty. My name's Maiden. Where does this come from? Yes, as soon as women are ready to have a committed relationship, they turn into a rusty truck. I'm not going to show the image because YouTube would probably demonetize this video based on it. But anyway, somebody showed up to the VMAs dressed in like a see-through dress, like black with some sparkles on, with tape over boob nipples and vagina tape. As someone commented going, beautiful, but don't they have to sit down? And I'm just wondering what they think happens. Why are they questioning if she has to sit down? Why would this outfit be a problem if she had to sit? What do they think happens when people sit down? You must wear underwear when you sit down, otherwise problem. I don't get it. Is there any reason why Nintendo gave Link a vagina bones? A. 
vagina bones. Not gave Link vagina bones, or gave Link a vagina bone, but gave Link a vagina bones. What are vagina bones? I mean, what they're pointing to is like the little muscle, like, I don't know what they're called, but plenty of people have these. Typically people with like abs, or who are quite like toned in the muscular sense. I don't know of it being something that is specific to one assigned birth sex over another. Actually saying that, I feel like transvestigators, the people that think every like celebrity is trans, said something about pink. Like, oh, she must be a man because of the muscle definition along the hip bones. But now here, they're being called vagina bones. I'm so, I don't understand. What are vagina bones? Somebody answer. I don't think there is an answer, is there? Nature is clear. Women ought to have long hair and men short. Long hair on a woman is her glory. Long hair on a man is a disgrace. What is short hair on a man and short hair on a woman, they didn't go into the specificity of short hair. Just long hair. Apparently long hair is a woman's glory. That is all you're worth, that is what your glory and worth boils down to having long hair, women. Mm -hmm. If you're a man, disgraceful. Where has this come from? I mean, scissors are a relatively new invention in terms of the grand scheme of humans. I appreciate there were knives around before, but you know, there weren't like hair trimmers and there weren't hair dressers and there wasn't the ability to get your hair cut. There probably wasn't the foresight or the time to get your hair cut. Like, I don't think hair was high up on the list of priorities for humans way back when. People had all sorts of lengths of hair. Hair is hair. Just saying. If it was disgraceful for men to have long hair, then men's hair would not grow long. And if women needed to have long hair, then women's hair would be so tough you wouldn't be able to cut it. But no, you can do whatever you want with hair, pretty much. All you transphobes are going to feel real silly when men can get uterus implants. I don't know why that's stressing transphobes specifically and then talking about men getting uterus implants. I've heard that it's on the horizon for trans women. Anyway, someone quote retweeted that going, but also males can't give birth because the pelvis is not wide enough. Reply, claiming the 32.1% of women who give birth via C-section aren't women is pretty insane. Ah, uh, yes, because I'm assuming by males they mean trans women and also just like the epitome of being a woman is being able to give birth not via C-section. I want to keep a list. There's like this TikTok trend where people are like new ick. I'm not a fan of it. I don't know, somebody's partner was like putting sun cream on and they were like icks and they scroll down like a list of 200 and they were like putting on sun cream. I find that uncomfortable but I could start my own list of things that people think makes you a real man slash real woman and then just write different ones and here the, the, this is having a pelvis wide enough to give birth. That is what makes you a real woman. Lovely. Feminism has shaped people into thinking it's their body. It is first and foremost God's. Then your husband's. Then yours. <gasps> Uh, I read the God bit and I was like, that is something that is uncomfortable. And then it got worse. How did it get worse? Your body belongs to your husband. That's gross because at its core, it's like God is renting your body to your husband and then you are subletting yours off your husband. No, feminism is taking away body subletting. This is not a viewpoint I've ever come across before, like said in this way. It's kind of alluded to. I've definitely seen elements of it, but I've not seen somebody just like straight up, your body is God's, then your husband's, then your, like that's just so wrong. Whenever I read these attitudes, I'm just like, I really, hope the people with these viewpoints never get a partner because it just really feels like their partner will not be treated with respect. College women stop getting drunk. Where's this going? It's closely associated with sexual assault and yet we're reluctant to tell women to stop doing it. This was written 10 years ago, but like, I think we've made a lot of progress on this kind of, well, not as much as we should have. Some, sorry, that's my phone again. Some progress has been made on this viewpoint in the past decade, not enough. I wouldn't be surprised if this had been written like very recently as well. This is just that whole horrendous thing of blaming the victim in these scenarios and saying like, you must have asked for it. You must have done something that led to this happening. Oh, it's your fault because of what you were wearing. It's your fault because of the route you walked home. It's your fault because you were drunk. And it's just disgusting. The only person's fault that these assaults are is the person doing the assaulting. That is where the fault starts and ends. That's it. Simple as. Like, why don't you tell everybody to stop drinking that? What? No. <laughs> the vagina is a naturally existing orifice that is required for urination. 
No. It's actually not. Literally not. There's options within metodioplasty, which is a bottom surgery option for transmasculine people, where you can pee from where you have always peed, but have a vaginectomy. So where everything, you get a hysterectomy, and then the opening is closed and everything is removed. But you still pee from the same place. So, actually, no. Ha. And, like, the urethra and the vagina are two separate things. So how you can possibly believe that one is needed for the other and you need a vagina to P. Take a basic anatomy lesson, please. And yeah, I said basic. Don't give your blood to a woman because she won't keep it for more than 28 days. They're talking about periods. They don't bleed to death on their period, though. They just throw it away all wasteful. Like, it could still be used, I'm sure... You dead ass have to be joking. You have to be joking. Oh yes, it will soon become a crime for anybody who has a period to not save it all and donate it to blood donation places. They do realise what periods are, don't they? I don't think they do. I mean, yes, there is blood, but not just. Blood. I love that concept though of like, ah oh, yes, if a, if a woman receives a blood donation, she's just gonna waste it. Don't bother. You would probably bleed more if you were clumsy and cut yourself. Women only love their children, <laughs> love their children, because during childbirth, when the baby's head crowns the vagina, it's the hardest I can't read that on YouTube. It's the hardest a woman will ever something in her life. Women's narcissism knows no bounds that anything they truly love is Satan. On the subreddit Bad Women's Anatomy, there is a lot of stuff that is just a bit funny and a bit lighthearted. But then there is some stuff that is truly very dark. And we've seen a few examples of both today. Like just some misdone drawings, right? That we can have a giggle at and be like, ah, yes, women, the expectation is that your boobs come out your neck. But then there's also things like women women's bodies not belonging to themselves and then things like this that are just really gross and really inappropriate and just kind of like very scary viewpoints. Sorry, the doorbell went. I do not remember what I was talking about. Something to do with this post. Yes, just horrible. And sometimes I forget that there's people out in the world that have these kind of opinions. And I'm like, <laughs> for example, if a woman dyes her hair brown while menstruating, then her blood will also be brown permanently. Some people bleach their hair, which will kill them because they are putting bleach in their bloodstream. It's fine to bleach your hair while not on your period, though, because your body is back to normal. Just another example of many examples as to why everybody should be included in all types of sex education. Why do people believe this? That dyeing your hair will change the colour of your blood. If you do it whilst you're on your period and bleaching your hair on your period will kill you. What the actual hell? The posts for this video, I don't know what has happened recently, but I feel like I'm on some very weird roller coaster. Girls costumes? Death. <laughs> A skeleton without legs. Cool. I think that the girls costumes are on the left, but yes, not the best placement for the sign and the skeletons. How many examples of unrealistic expectations for women have we seen in this video so far? Here's another one. Lynn I'm assuming it's lingerie, but you can just see linge. I mean, at first glance, it's all right. And then you keep looking and you realize that that kind of angle on the hip, you would not be able to lie like that for very long if you can lie like that at all. Was that modeled off of a real person? If so, fair. If not, interesting. Not sure if many people could lie like that. Fascinating choice of mannequin. Actually, drinking large amount of water is as such harmful, but yes, the way of drinking it might make it harmful, especially for females. I'm not sure if that sentence quite made sense sense except for the way you drink water could make it harmful particularly for it's always a red flag when people call women females females should avoid drinking water directly from the bottle and in standing position because in such manner the force of the drunk water is directly exerted in the uterus of the female and it makes the uterus weak in a long run in a long run okay so if you're doing a marathon your uterus may be weak if you drink I just feel like the whole thing of like, oh, women are delicate. Women's bodies are delicate. And there are so many restrictions on what you can and can't do. And it's just bullshit. Don't drink from the bottle in a standing position. Wall Pilates to lift breasts four times for four different ages. I think if you build your pec muscles a bit, it can do a little bit of something. But like only if you have a smaller chest. Your breasts are not muscle. You can't train them to sit in a certain way, like by doing Pilates. What are these? Downward dog, K, 
camel pose, leg raises. Goddess squat, puppy pose, camel pose. Table pose, boat pose, goddess squat. Dynamic plank, gate pose, puppy pose. They sound made up. If anyone I've heard of is downward dog. I see handing out hygiene products to women, similar to handing out alcohol to alcoholics and cigarettes to smokers. This is translated from German. If there's any German speakers watching, has this been accurately translated? Can it be accurately translated? Something could have got lost, but I think a lot would have needed to get lost for this to be completely misinterpreted. I am struggling with this one. Do they think like, ah, if we don't make the hygiene products easily accessible, then maybe periods will not happen. They will just not need them. You are just wanting to have a period at this point. I love these workout classes that are really hard but aren't too intense on my hormones. I feel like a lot of gyms are geared towards men and don't cater to female hormones. I wouldn't necessarily disagree that a lot of gym environments feel very much like man dominated. I see that angle. I don't know what female hormones have to do with it. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't. I'm not sorry. I don't. <laughs> Body shaping control, panties, comfy, adjustable, tummy control, thong, women's lingerie and underwear. 100k plus sold. They seem to get good reviews. They just look hellishly uncomfortable and it's like buy this product and look like this because this is the epitome of good look what you want to look like. Yes, my brain broke for a second there because I'm still, I'm still understanding this image. I'm not understanding this image. Yeah, I've heard of things like Spanx and stuff, body shape wear, but not something that it looks like a computer generated model with a very extreme body shape that this underwear has managed to change substantially because that's very in waist. That is a very, very, very in waist waste. Casual sex is one of the biggest scams of the 21st century. During sex, your body releases oxytocin, which makes you subconsciously bond with your partner. Brief attachment with many people leaves you feeling empty. Also damages your trust, empathy, and ability to feel intimacy. I don't buy into that. I also don't think casual sex is something that's just for the 21st century. I think like, from what I've heard, like pre-Victorian times and like the Roman times, <laughs> interesting take. But somebody commented going, that only happens for women, but carry on. I know us men can still have all the casual sex. It's not damaging for us, just women. Well, who are you having all that casual sex with then? Bob, Dave, or I don't know what your name is. Questions? Nothing wrong if Bob slash Dave is having casual sex with other men, but I'm not sure if that's the angle that was being got at here. Very nice hands. Looks like you have a super tight vagina. That's a new one. Lol, that is a new one. That is a, that is a, that is a new one. Oh, I'm sorry if you can hear that power tool in the background. That is rather annoying. I'm just gonna power through. Very nice. I don't see the connection. How did they get from hands to vagina? No. No. Oh, this video is just a whole bag of nope. I squeeze my girl when she on her period because she my little ketchup packet. Please don't do that. <laughs> what? You squeeze your girl like a ketchup packet when she's on her Dude, little red heart. Red, specifically. I feel like it's said as a joke, so I'm not judging it too harshly. It's just kind of a weird thing to say. I mean, I hope you don't squeeze her at any other times, thinking that she's a different type of sauce, you know? Cake topper. Oh, it started again. A cake topper. <laughs> Still going. Still going. You're not seeing this cake topper yet. Wait for it. It's fine. It's necessary. It's stopped. I can show you the cake topper. Ta-da! The body ideal is to have stick coming out of your bum that you put into a cake. What a lovely design for a cake topper. I mean, look at those ankles as well. It's not just the stick. There's a lot about the very long, thin neck. I mean, look at the thing that a lot about this is interesting before we even get to the stick. <laughs> On marriage day, a van stuck between two walls. Five years after marriage. Okay, if you know what I mean. Yes, I do know, I do know what you mean and, and what you mean is horrendous and awful and happy divorce because that's what should happen. You can't be a Christian then still believe in menopause. Why? Is there like anybody who knows stuff about Christianity? Is there something about menopause? And it started again. 
Do you know what? I'm just gonna go with it. I'm hoping it's not that loud. So you can't be Christian and believe in menopause. Why? Is there something like anti-menopause? Does it apparently not exist in Christianity? It is a very real thing that happens. I don't think that you can deny it. It's a thing. It happens. It's not something you believe in. It is just something that exists and that happens. So that's very bizarre. Posting anonymously because I'm embarrassed to ask. This has caused a lot of debate and hoping you ladies could shed some clarity on the issue. My husband is sure he is right and is becoming very frustrated and mean to me over this disagreement. Hmm. So backstory, I had a rhinoplasty done before I got pregnant, that is when you get surgery done on your nose. I made a comment recently that I wonder whose nose the baby would get and I said hopefully mine. My husband has a big nose and mine is literally perfect from your rhinoplasty or before. Well, he is saying either way our baby will have an ugly nose, mean, since I had a beak prior to my rhinoplasty. I hope that's not why she got it. But that doesn't make any sense to me. My nose now is cute. I felt like that was where this was going. I hoped it wasn't, but it was. The baby should get my present nose, right? No. Not my past nose, even though I haven't had that nose for years or while being pregnant. Genetics and biology. My husband keeps saying, no, it's what you're born with and compares it to breast implants, but it's not something added to my body. It's a modification that is now part of my DNA. I should pass on. SOS. Plastic surgery does not change like your DNA. Like having a rhinoplasty does not mean that your new nose is now like your genetically, biologically inherited nose. Your nose that you will pass on is still the nose you had before. But it could be a combination and it could skip a generation. It's not necessarily that your child will end up with one or other nose or like a perfect combination of the biological parent's noses. It can be a lot of different things, but not a rhinoplasty. It can come from other genetic influences, but not surgery. Sorry, your husband is correct. Still find it rude that he said you'd a beak before. That is uh, interesting. And talking of interesting, that's all the Bad Women's Anatomy posts for today. I feel a bit broken after that. This video is honestly a struggle to film and not just because of the power tool outside. What did you think of it? Wow. I feel like I was transported to a different dimension and now I'm coming back to reality. Woo, hello. Yeah, leave your comments down below and let me know what you think. Think about giving the video a thumbs up and subscribing if you want to, but no pressure. And yeah, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Much love. Bye.